Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So we're finally, finally doing it. We're gonna do the cow trimmer belt replacement video with clutch adjustment. That's right, you better stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to season two, episode 26. 0.5 here on Dwayne's World. Why is it 26.5? Well, I did release episode 26, and unfortunately, I had to take that video down. And let me kind of explain why that happened. So first of all, let me thank everybody that had actually watched that. I know quite a few people have taken a look at my cow trimmer belt replacement clutch adjustment video, and I want to thank you for your support. However, I was having some technical difficulties with my YouTube account, and I accidentally deleted that upload. So even though it wasn't my intent to delete that video, I think in a lot of ways it was a blessing in disguise. Because after watching the video again and actually doing some further research and actually speaking to people in the industry, I found a lot more information that I think will be much more useful when you guys tackle the belt replacement on your California trimmer. So I figured I'll redo portions of the California trimmer video as well as use some of the original footage when I'm putting together this new video for you guys, which is why it's 26.5. So with that, let me go ahead and take you back to when I believed I thought I needed a belt replacement. All right, guys, so today I decided to get a mow in. Wasn't planning on necessarily putting this on video, but I figured, let me grab the camera and put this into the California trimmer a belt and clutch replacement video. I wanna show you guys why I decided that I needed to do a clutch adjustment. But before we get into that, look at that stripe action. Absolutely on point. God, the color's great. Let me go ahead and turn it around. All right, guys, there we are. It's only been about two days since my last mow when you guys saw the update on Stay Green Natural Fertilizer in the lawn. It's just absolutely on fire now. You know, you can still see some of the stripe action from the McLean the other day. Kind of forms a really nice diamond pattern when you time it up here with the, you know, California trimmer today. But let me go ahead and show you guys why I believe a clutch adjustment is in order. And it was ironic because initially when I first started using this mower today, I didn't have the problem. It wasn't until my very last pass then I'm going to show you guys what the mower started doing that tells me it needs a clutch adjustment. All right, guys, let me turn it down here for a second. All right, of course it's so frustrating because I cannot get it to duplicate on video now. As soon as I turned off the mower to grab my camera, it looks like it's okay. So basically, one thing I wanted to show you guys, and let me kind of just speed up the reel here uh, to show you what I was experiencing. So as you guys saw there, after I depressed the reel, the reel would still spin, and that's always been normal. However, what was happening when I was having the problem is even though I let off on the lever, the reel still wanted to spin. However, what I did to stop it is I went ahead and just kind of jiggled the wire here on the clutch, and then it stopped. So that tells me that there's something off slightly on the tension of the clutch. That is ultimately why I decided that I needed to do a clutch adjustment. last video clip was on my original video and I kept it and the reason why I wanted to keep it is because I did not properly diagnose what was actually wrong with the California trimmer I initially thought it was a belt replacement which was going to lead to this video but in fact in the research that I had done and the people that I spoke with a belt replacement doesn't typically fix the symptoms that I was having during that video meaning in most cases when a belt is tending to wear out you're not finding that the reel is gonna continuously spin. So what's more typical of a belt replacement that's needed is generally when the belt just breaks 
or you have a loss in propulsion. I wanted to clarify that because that was something that I mentioned in my first video that wasn't accurate, and I just wanted to set the record straight. All right, guys, so one of the things I just want to mention before we actually get into the actual belt replacement and clutch adjustment on the California trimmer is a couple of things. The first thing is YouTube is a wonderful forum when it comes to actually researching and finding information out. I have mentioned in previous videos that I never proclaim to be an expert or actually work for a particular manufacturer. I'm just a DIYer just like you guys and really an enthusiast when it comes to real mowers. Although YouTube can be used to tackle a lot of problems, I don't ever want to send the message that is a replacement of any particular instructions that the manufacturer may provide. So one of the things I didn't do in my original video that I'd like to do in this video, it's in my description below. I'm actually going to include the California Trimmer Belt Replacement Guide from California Trimmer. I think when you look at these instructions in combination with watching videos, it will really help set you up for success when you want to tackle one of these projects. It's just something I always want to caution people about whenever you're tackling any particular project. Although YouTube, like I mentioned, can be a great guide, don't ever look at it as a substitution to what a manufacturer may suggest. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into the belt replacement. All right, so what we need to do in order to start the belt replacement is we're gonna go ahead and remove that cover there. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and take you back to some of my original coverage when it came to removing the belt cover on the California trimmer. All right, so in order to remove the belt, you're gonna go ahead and take off the one bolt there and the one bolt there, and that'll allow us to be able to pull off the cover. All right, so let me go ahead and remove these 7 16 bolts. That one there. And one there. All right, go ahead and set those to the side. All right, and there we are with the belt cover. Now that I got the belt cover off, I'm gonna go ahead and just back off on this one bolt right here. Basically allow me to be able to move this little bracket here that basically applies a little bit of tension to the belt. Okay, so now that that's just loosened up, I'm gonna go ahead and just move it to the side, and now I'll be able to access the belt. Before we go ahead and take off the old belt here, let me show you what belt we're gonna use in its replacement. Uh, the measurement on this belt is considered a 4L180. So this is one that's made by Gates, definitely good high quality OEM belt, and that's gonna work well for our application today. All right guys, so let me just jump in here because this is a part of the video that I really wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk about that I didn't realize was as big of a deal as it truly is when I put together that first video. You know, I believed initially that all 4180 belts were the same. They're not. Even though they're all listed as 4L180, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all a true 18 inch circumference. They're gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, which I understand to a certain degree because I understand tolerances are gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Now, with that being said and kind of doing research and talking to people, there are three belts that California Trimmer recommends using on the California Trimmer. Now, each of these belts are not made by California Trimmer. They're obviously outsourced by a different manufacturer in one of which is the Gates belts that I actually showed you guys in this video. The other belt is made by a company called Bandu or Bando, however you want to pronounce it. Either way, it'll be in the description below. And there's a last one, which I hope I pronounce this right, but it's Michubashi. Not Michubishi, Michubashi. Mishibashi. I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's a tongue twister for me, I guess, right? But either way, regardless of the manufacturer name, I'm going to link each of these belts below, as well as websites where you can pick up these belts, because these are the belts that California Trimmer absolutely recommends. Why is the belt choice so important? Well, number one, the cost of each of these belts are not very much, you know, probably less than 10 bucks. But with that being said, it's important that you use one of these. I think a common complaint that people have had after a belt replacement is that the belt has actually broken. Now, sometimes, even though it can be a result of a belt that is not actually made to OEM specs, it doesn't always mean that the belt is at fault. There are other things, and I'm gonna talk about those other things as we get deeper into the video here on what you need to do to ensure you get the life out of your particular belt. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can just go ahead and kind of maneuver this off of the belt pulley manually, which is very easy to do there, as you guys can see. Back. Now I should be able to remove it from the back pulley and hopefully be able to slide it through here. Now, as you guys can see, I can't go ahead and remove the rest of the belt here. Um, I can go ahead and remove these bolts here if I want to, but I should be able to just move my clutch lever far enough. 
All right, guys, so as I showed you guys in the video where I stopped it, you absolutely do not want to move that clutch arm forward when you are removing your belt. And let me go ahead and just zoom in here to show you guys why it's important you don't do that. If you guys see here, there's an actual spring that's actually connected to that arm. Now, when you're going ahead and moving that arm forward, potentially you can damage that spring below, and you absolutely do not want to do that. So the proper way to actually remove the belt from the California trimmer is to go ahead and remove the half inch bolt here. Now, as you guys see here, there are little rollers that are actually attached to this arm. So one of the things that's mentioned in the instruction manual is to go ahead and grab some electrical tape and go ahead and actually tape off that portion. And that's gonna allow those bearings to stay together so they don't fumble around when you actually remove those half inch bolts. So with that, let me go ahead and show you guys the proper way to do it. All right, so now I just cut off a little piece of electrical tape. I'm gonna go ahead and just tape it down. And that I think should hold those three bearings in place. I think that's probably pretty good. So, all right, so I just wanted to change the angle here to show you guys. There's an actual little nut here. Hopefully it's coming out on the camera that you can see there. I'm gonna go ahead and just put an open end box wrench on that side. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my socket wrench on this side here. All right guys, so just because of the camera angle here, I wanna go ahead and do this so you guys can best see it. Uh, so at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and just place a half inch wrench here. And then I have a half inch wrench here. And I will be able to actually loosen that bolt there, which I have already done. Here. I have it pretty loosened. I do not actually have to remove this from the actual fixture. All I need to do is be able to back it off far enough where I'm able to get off that end bolt and it went ahead and fell off there. That's fine. And uh, now I can go ahead and just remove the actual bracket itself. Now, as you guys can see here, because of the fact that I had that tape on the actual bearings, they're not going anywhere. They're going to pretty much stay right there and I won't have an issue. Now that you have this portion off, that's going to allow you enough room to be able to be able to get your belt. You guys can see here, I should now be able to get that belt off. I'm not going to go ahead and change it because again, this is my newer belt. This is not my old belt. At the same time, I want to show you guys how to properly remove this because once you get this part off and you get these off the pulleys here, you are going to be good to go. All right, guys. So I want to show you guys something as you were seeing on that video, that is my new belt. Well, this is my old belt. And people have asked me, Dwayne, how long has this belt lasted you? And I spoke to a few different people. And I actually even spoke to people at California Trimmer. And the guy at California Trimmer, Jim, thank you very much. Jim had actually mentioned that this belt that I have in my hand might be the longest used belt on a California Trimmer that he has heard about. It might take the record. So thank you, Jim. I appreciate that award. This belt, I'm going to guess, is between four and five years old. Um, you know, I probably have used it for four growing seasons. You know, I've been in my home for about five years. You know, I purchased the California trimmer maybe after living in my home for about a year. So that's my guess. It's about four years old. With that being said, I have to even be honest with you. I don't even know if I needed to replace it. That's crazy. You know, if you think about it, you know, I'm looking at the belt and I cannot find anywhere where it's showing signs that it was going to break. Now, why is that? How did my belt, why did I get so lucky, so to speak? Because I've heard of people, and I know California Trimmers heard of people, and it's been on the forums, where they've done a belt replacement, and their first belt maybe lasted them two years, and this last belt only lasted them six months. What happened? Well, from one of the reasons I mentioned when I talked about the actual belts and which ones they're using. So if people are just going to the store and grabbing any 4190 belt, that may be the reason. But it's not only going to be the only sole reason potentially of why a belt actually snaps. So before I go ahead and complete the installation and talk about how to properly set the belt, let me just talk about why some of these belts fail and why some people have an issue. All right, so one of the things that is ironic about this belt replacement video is it really kind of sheds some light on how the actual entirety of the real mower works and how one piece is linked to another. So for example, where a lot of people have had belt issues in the past, it may have nothing to do with the belt. And what I mean is if other things aren't properly set, it can cause premature failure on the belt. Now, for example, one of the things I've always talked about about my California trimmer that I absolutely love is the minimal reel to bed knife clearance. Of course, there's going to be some actual contact between the reel and the actual bed knife. However, at the same time, I've seen people overly tighten their reel to bed knife. And if you think about it, what that does is that puts extra strain on the actual clutch, on the belt, 
in other pieces of the actual real motor. So I just want to make sure everybody understands how one piece is definitely connected to the next. The other thing that's important is the lubrication of your actual chains. Are your chains being properly lubricated when it comes to overall maintenance? It's a very important aspect. I'm not saying you have to do it every week, but it is something you absolutely want to tend to. There's also a couple other things that I want to mention, although rare, do happen from time to time. Now, the one thing, even though it's rare, I think it's still worth taking a look at from time to time is to ensure that your pulleys are properly aligned. So again, what I mean by alignment is that your front pulley and your back pulley are aligned vertically. And as you can imagine, if it's not, your belt's not going to run true and it could put excess wear on your belt, ultimately causing it to fail. The other piece also is right here on the actual clutch lever when it comes to these bearings. You absolutely want to make sure that these bearings are spinning freely. If these bearings are not spinning freely, they may need to be replaced. And that obviously will cause premature wear because of the fact that they are reliant on this belt being able to spin when the reel is engaged. All right, guys, so I want to do this just because I did it in my first video, and I really want to thank somebody. I want to thank Scott. Scott is the owner of Triangle Reel Mowers. I'm going to go ahead and post his information here up on the screen here. You know, I've known Scott for a little while now, and he has been a great resource to me, and I want to thank him for all of his information and guidance because he's really helped take my California trimmer ownership to the next level. So if you guys are in the market for purchase a California trimmer, give Scott a call here. This is not an endorsed video. This is not a sponsored video. Scott didn't tell me to do this. I'm doing this to tell everybody that Scott is a great guy and he's the one you want to go through when it comes to looking at purchasing a California trimmer. So again, give Scott a call. All right, so the second person I just want to recognize is Jim. Jim, I know I've never met you, uh, but I spoke to you over the phone. Thank you so much uh, for all of your information that you provided. Definitely been a great help for me being able to put this video together, which ultimately is for all of you guys that are watching because you guys are going to get the most out of the information that I'm being able to provide here on Dwayne's World. So Jim, thank you very much. Look forward to the continued partnership and definitely appreciate all of your insight. So with that, let's get back to the video. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my previous video on actually putting the belt back. But because of the fact that my actual belt stop is off here on this particular part of the actual clutch arm, not only easy removal, but easy installation because you'll be able to easily get your belt over these bearings here and ultimately onto the pulleys there. So that, let me go ahead and show you the guys the previous video of the installation of the belt. Around uh, both this back pulley, as we can see there, along with the one on the engine as well. Now, it does not surprise me that the new belt definitely has more tension, as it should, because of the fact that there's no stretch, and the old one probably stretched out a little bit. There we go. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and just put back the bracket here. There is a little bit of adjustment that you can make on this particular bracket. And let me kind of zoom in for you guys just so you can see a little bit closer here. As you guys can see here, there is a little bit of play that I can adjust back and forth. Um, so for just for right now, I'm going to go ahead and actually just have it lined up by eye um, just where I think it should be. Now, I may need to come back and actually adjust this, but that's okay. The actual guard here is to stop the belt from spinning whenever the mower is not in motion. But it should clear the belt whenever the clutch is depressed. And let's make sure it does that. So let me kind of move the camera here just so you guys can get a better view to see that it does clear the actual belt. So we should be good to go. Of course, I still have the rear stop here. And I'm going to now go ahead and secure and button up the front stop here. Should be able to go ahead and remove my tape here. Not a problem anymore. And now let me go ahead and just tighten down that bracket. is I'm just going to go ahead and snug it down and then be able to see if I have enough clearance when I actually engage the clutch. All right, guys, so I have everything kind of buttoned back up here, kind of like how it was before I went ahead and removed that particular belt stop there. And I'll go ahead and show you guys some of the tolerances and some of the clearances here. But one thing I wanted to point out, which was a very important lesson for me when kind of doing my research, was that this actual clutch arm here, if you think about it, an old belt is going to be stretched. Therefore, this particular clutch arm might be slightly leaning forward, meaning when you actually put a new belt on, this arm is going to want to come back because now this particular circumference of the belt is smaller than your old stretched belt. I hope that makes sense. As a good general rule, when it comes to this clutch arm, though, it should be facing fairly straight up. 
the L bracket, that's the belt guard, should be closer to 11 o'clock. So this is something just to keep an eye on, but know that the tolerance is going to change whenever you go ahead and install the new belt. So one of the things I pointed out in my last video that was inaccurate was when it comes to the clutch adjustment, which is what I want to start talking about now. All right, so one of the things I wanted to point out that was wrong in my first video had to do with the adjustment on this side of the clutch cable. I believe that there was an, a different adjustment point here compared to at the lever. And in fact, there is no difference between the two. However, with that being said, the manufacturer recommends any clutch adjustment be done from the top portion here and not from the bottom portion. And if you think about it, it really makes sense because of the fact that the clutch cable is just a single cable, meaning they're not two separate cables that connect here and connect here. They all are one cable. Really, and even according to the manufacturer, the only reason why this particular point exists is it allows for an attachment point on the mower. So meaning there's no adjustment that's needed here. So I want to clarify that from my first video. You do not need to do any adjustment here. So in order to actually get any adjustment here, you don't want to come here. You want to go here. That's where you would be looking at to actually adjust your particular clutch. So again, just to clarify, if you need any adjustment here, do not go there, go there. And with that, let's go ahead and look to see if I need any adjustment. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to set up a side-by-side -side view here, and I think hopefully it's gonna help show you guys what I'm trying to explain. If you're noticing here, when I depress on the clutch, it's moving the clutch arm down by the pulley. So whenever you're making any adjustment here, whatever you're doing here is going to affect what's happening down there. So that's why it's important to understand that you do not need to adjust at the bottom and everything is just going to be adjusted from the top here. So let me go ahead and loosen these up here. Now one quick tip, a pro tip, whenever you're tightening these back, do not tighten the bottom one. Hold the bottom one and tighten the top one to be able to lock it down. From what I understand, in some cases when people have actually tried to tighten the bottom one, you may end up snapping off this bracket here. So the right way to do it is set your actual, set one of your wrenches here just to hold it in place and to get all of your securing down with the top bolt there. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and I just have the bottom adjustable wrench here just to hold my bottom nut and I'm gonna go ahead and use my other wrench here to go ahead and loosen the top. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and back it off just slightly here. So the other thing that I mentioned in previous videos is I always talked about a 50-50 split between the top and the bottom here. I guess from what I understand, it's not as relevant as I had once thought. It's really as long as your actual clutch is functioning the way it should, um, that 50-50 split is not really that important. All right, so I'm going to just back these off here. And again, I'm going to see here. All right, so I felt like the tension was just a little bit loose. So what I'm going to do is I just back this off just slightly. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down. This should tighten it up a little bit. There we go. Now I can just bring this top one back here. And let me go ahead and just give it a quick little tightening just so I can make sure that I have good pressure. So again, as I'm going to fully tight, as, as I'm going to tighten here, I'm just tightening on the top one, holding the bottom. That clutch lever feels pretty good. Not over tightened. All right, it feels good, pretty good there. Now what's important also, again, it's not just about here. It's about what's happening at the bottom. So let me go ahead and show you guys. So as I'm depressing the clutch, if you look here, it might be a little bit hard to see. I'm trying to get the angle right for you guys. I'm kind of holding my camera upside down here. I just want to show you guys there is enough clearance. All right, so, all right, so hopefully you guys can see that. There's barely clearance there, but that's good. That's enough clearance for it to actually pass through the belt. And then that way, when the belt comes to a stop, it's going to stop there. If I look at the opposite side here, 
and then on the rear belt, and then on the rear here, hopefully you can see, it definitely clears there as well. All right, so now I feel like we're pretty good. We'll go ahead and start it up here in a minute just to make sure we're in good shape. But even then, let me go ahead and talk to you guys about when a clutch adjustment is actually needed. Now, so here's the million dollar question. Dwayne, when do I adjust my clutch or when do I replace my belt? Now, generally, you can get away with just doing a couple of adjustments to get more life out of your belt. Well, why is that? Well, that's because over time, as you can imagine, the belt will stretch. And by having the ability to be able to adjust this arm through the clutch lever, that's going to allow you to be able to apply more tension to the belt once it actually stretches out. That's very important. That's the great thing about the California trimmer. In a lot of other cases, things that are belt driven doesn't give you the adjustment. So this gives you the adjustment to be able to further tension your belt. Also, you can adjust things like your propulsion. Because as you can imagine, if your adjustment is off here, it's going to affect how fast your mower actually propels. So I love the fact that California Trimmer has that adjustability to really be able to fit the end user, which is definitely gonna help you guys get the most out of your mowing experience. So the one thing I wanna point out is you only can adjust so far. Meaning once your belt stretches and you adjust and then you find your belt stretching again and you need to readjust, belts do not cost that much. In that case, go ahead and just replace your belt and start all over again. And that way, as your new belt continues to stretch, you'll have the adjustment available to be able to do it. I hope that clears it up. I think a lot of people think I absolutely have to do a clutch adjustment. It depends. It depends on whether it's appropriate. And I just want to set the record straight on when you should be doing a clutch adjustment. And it's generally when your belt has started to stretch, you need to be able to increase the tension on the belt, which the clutch adjustment gives you the ability to do. And again, no adjustment there, all your adjustment there. All right, guys, so I just want to jump in here just for a quick second here because I did a teaser at the end of my first video. I don't know if you guys caught it, but on one of my future episodes of Dwayne's World, I'll be featuring that guy right there, right? That's right. So I hope you guys, you know, look forward to that future content. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a like as always, and be sure to comment on this video below. Start. All right, so I've already kind of warmed it up, so I'm going to move my choke a little more forward than normal. All right, guys, so just one disclaimer I just want to point out. There's been several times in this video where I've ran my reel without it actually cutting grass, meaning just spinning on itself. Remember, that's metal on metal contact. The more you do that, the actually the worse it is for the mower. Generally, when your reel is spinning, you want to be cutting grass. <laughs> you don't want to just be running your reel. Because remember, and I talked about this when it comes to setting your reel and bed knife tolerances, that as you have more metal on metal contact, it will heat up and those tolerances will actually shrink. So that's why it's important, again, minimize the wear. How do you minimize the wear? Don't have a lot of excessive metal on metal contact. So even though I'm doing this little test for you, I just caution people, even though it looks really cool, do not continuously run your reel when there's nothing that is cutting and the reel is just spinning over and over again. Again, there's going to be times where it's necessary to test it, to be able to see what's going on, to make sure things are set correctly. But generally, you just don't want to do it for the fun of it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and install the belt cover. So one of the things I want to point out is if you still have the problem with the reel actually still spinning after you actually depressed off the clutch, it's because of the fact that more than likely the belt hasn't broken in yet. So what you will do is you would run your mower from 30 to 60 minutes thereafter. Maybe that's one or two mows, depending on the size of your lawn, and it should fix itself. If it doesn't fix itself, go back to the instructions, come back to my video, take a look at those tolerances. But again, any adjustment points that are made at the clutch, do it at the handlebar, and really look at those belt stops, as that might be the reason why your belt is continuously still spinning, which is still engaging the reel. One of the things I also mentioned earlier in the video that I just wanna reiterate, 
The belt is one of very many moving parts. So meaning if the reel is set too tight, if the chains aren't properly lubricated, if there's other friction points that haven't been addressed, that will affect the overall performance of your mower. Not everything strictly relies on the belt and or is the belt's fault whenever you have to do a replacement or a clutch adjustment. So just keep those things in mind is whenever you're doing anything maintenance related, understand that A connects to B, connects to C and so forth. So that way you make sure your mower overall is set up properly. So that way you get the most out of your mower. All right, guys, so I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It was a lot of fun being able to put it together for you for season two, episode 26.5. That's right, 26.5. But I think everything happens for a reason. It was funny how it happened where I had the glitch and I'm being 100% transparent here. It absolutely was an accident and a mistake when it came to deleting that first video. But everything happens for a reason. And thereafter, I felt that I would take the opportunity of that glitch and of that mishap and really do a better video for you guys. And that's really what it was all about. You know, the first video was a good video, but I feel like this video is a much more accurate depiction of how to actually replace your belt or do your clutch adjustment on the California trimmer. And I always wanna be transparent with you guys and always wanna provide the best information for you. So that way you have the most out of your real mowing experience, regardless of what type of real mower you own. So with that, as always, be excellent and party on.